The only theory I can come up with, and I know you guys are going to think this is crazy, it's bird's nest, so this was literally overnight thrower, and I really like What's this. up, everyone? Welcome back to my channel, ReefRx. Here to give you an update today on the Waterbox 110.4, and then my new Waterbox I got going, uh, the 60.2. So I've um, got some good stuff to talk about, got some bad stuff to talk about, um, and we'll jump into that in just a second. As always, if you guys enjoy my content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my videos. So, um, with the water box 110, the other night, I'm not really sure what happened, um, but I woke up to some of my corals looking like that. Um, this was a really filled in bird's nest, a nice colony. I'll put a picture of it right here. Um, so some of my corals just weren't looking happy. But a week ago, I noticed my uh, plate coral was not, uh, the, uh, was not, the tentacles weren't extended, right? So that was the first sign that something was not quite right. I uh, tested everything, everything that I can test looked good. So I'm not really sure from my point of view what was wrong. Um, tested the temperature just to make sure that um, my temperature wasn't out of calibration for my uh, Neptune system and the uh, ink bird. So temperature was good, uh, I was within calibration. And then this blasto coral I have right there, I'll put another picture here, but this thing was huge. That's not looking too happy. What's weird is I have another blasto right next to that toadstool, and that's looking okay. And then I have some blastos over here in my frag rack, and these are looking okay. So not all the corals were looking bad. Um, some of these acros I have over here um, kind of bleached out a bit. You can see on the back side. I, mean, I know they don't get a lot of light, so that's part of it on the back side, but they weren't white before, so they're starting to bleach out. Um, really have no idea what's going on. I did a big water change yesterday. I did about a 30 gallon water change. Um, I haven't really made any changes to the tank. The only thing I did recently was I harvested some Kato and I changed out the uh, the carbon and GFO, which I only went for about an hour or two a day. So, and I, so I changed that out. Um, don't really think that would explain it. I didn't do anything differently. It's from the same batch of what I've been using for carbon GFO. Um, rinsed that out as I always do, like nothing was out of the usual, out of the ordinary, I should say. Um, so really don't have an explanation. And, oh yeah, and then this coral right here, that started turning white. So that started turning white. That uh, plate coral wasn't looking good. Sent the I ICP test in. Still waiting on the results and then some other, like these other corals I was showing you, like that bird's nest and stuff. And even this, uh, even this blasto, that's not like as happy as it was. So, you know, and then that frog spawn too, actually. It, it, frog spawn doesn't look too, too bad, but it does, it's not as happy as it's been looking. So, I mean, you know, first thing that would come to mind maybe is like some coral warfare. I got a lot of stuff close together, as you can see in this tank, but. I think all, all of a sudden, like in all different areas of my tank for things to start changing like that, it doesn't really add up. So uh, I'm afraid I don't have an answer as to what's going on right now. So um, this bird's nest, so this was literally overnight, like I said, uh, the night before. So I did the water change yesterday, came back today. There has been no further die off, um, but I'm probably going to lose that whole thing. So. Hopefully the water change did it good. I'm going to kind of monitor things and possibly do another big water change if I have to. Um, well, I don't know. I really don't have an answer. If you guys have an idea, please drop them in the comments. Let me know, like, maybe what I'm not thinking of. Um, so that's the bad, right? So let's talk about the good. So I got some new frags over here. I went to Farmer Frag Market down in Connecticut, and I picked up all these Euphelia, so some torches, frog spawns, hammers. These are going to be for my new water box tank. So, um, and I picked up that cool frag rack there, too, Stay Salty, from um, Rhino's Reef. So... Um, that's the new stuff. Really, some really nice pieces there. I can't wait to get the new tank set up and have a Euphelia tank. And if you guys have been following me and I've been talking about this tank, you know the Euphelia tank's the route I want it to go. So that's the new stuff I got. Really, really cool looking. Well, I love the movement. I'm super excited to get the tank set up. Um, other than that, there's not a whole lot to talk about for this tank. So some of the new pieces I got from the breakdown of the Waterbox 60. Some green star polyps there, there's a piece there. That toadstool is part of it as well. And then um, there's another green star polyp in the back there. It's kind of hard to see. Got some cool zoa frags um, way in the back here. Behind the uh, rastas, kind of hard to see. 
Um, and the other thing, I'm going to start selling some frags again. I, was, I wasn't selling frags because of the Aptasia outbreak that I had in this tank, but now the Aptasia is completely gone. The Bergias did a tremendous job, zero Aptasia in this tank, so I'm going to start selling frags. I mean, if you look at that frag rack back there, it's pretty much a Zola Garden, you might as well call it. Um, it just is really filled in. So speaking of the Zola Garden, that's looking really good. Um, got a crazy story to tell you actually about uh, one of the fish I picked up. So a couple things, right? So I had a clown fish in here, a smaller one. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't paired up with this guy over here who's hiding behind that torch. There he is. So he always hung out at the back of the tank. I noticed the other day he was missing and uh, unfortunately he had jumped out of the tank. I found him behind the tank. I also got a goby from the, uh, from the breakdown, right? So the goby was, um, he was hanging out in the tank. He was really cool. He was moving all around the tank. And then um, a couple days ago, you know, I worked from home. So I was sitting at my desk and I heard a, I heard a loud noise. I thought it was coming from the return pump. So I'm like, I probably need to do, uh, you know, do some maintenance, right? Clean that. So it was really loud. I thought something maybe got stuck, maybe some Kato or something. So after work, I took apart, I cleaned all this out down here. So I took everything out. I took apart the, uh, the Neptune core pump and I did not see anything that would have caused a blockage. So then I'm like, you know what? The skimmer's dirty. Let me clean the skimmer. So I pulled the skimmer out, pulled the whole bottom off there and took the motor out, took the motor apart. And I, inside the motor the wheel was uh the, you know this this weird thing i don't know i felt it and it felt kind of scaly i'm like shit that feels like a fish well lo and behold somehow and unfortunately he died but lo and behold somehow the um the goby he he had to have jumped from the tank right so he couldn't fit through the the uh the overflow there there's no way he would have fit through there he was too big so is uh he jumped out of the tank through here somewhere right Fell down in here, bounced off the wall, and landed into this this chamber here. That's the only way, right? Because he he couldn't fit down there, and if he did, he would have come into the uh, the filter roller, and then from there he would have had to jump over it and then go through the little grates there. Um, so he had to bounce off that wall, fly into here, and then he went into that um, the intake right there. Craziest story ever, uh, and I know probably none of you guys believe me and I didn't witness it, but that's the only theory that could have possibly taken place. Um, but while I was in here taking everything apart, I did a really good cleaning to the sump. I took off the, um, the backflow valve. I took this all apart, cleaned it. I snaked all the way up to clean all the pipes. I took all, um, as I have a lot of manifolds, so this actually came uh, really in handy. So I took everything apart, cleaned inside the pipes, get a good clean to the skimmer. Like I said, I harvested some Kato the other day because this thing was just overflowed with Kato. Um, cleaned inside the, the uh, filter roller here. Show, show you a peek inside. So cleaned in there, all good. So tank got a really good maintenance the other day. Uh, cleaned all the equipment. So um, the other thing I got, I picked up the other day, I picked up the uh, picked up a power meter. So the Apogee, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's the uh, it's the MQ510. So and the reason why I picked that up, well, I've been wanting one for a while, especially with setting up the new tank, and I, and I like to change things a lot, like I move things around. Um, I wanted to see if, well, I don't think it is now, but I wanted to see if some of these corals were unhappy due to par. Like I know this acro right there that's bleached out, um, that acro likes lower light because I have the same one over here in the back. Trying to get it to focus here. Um, so that one likes lower light. So I wanted to get a par meter and just for placement and stuff and then was setting up the new tank. I'm like, you know what, I'll, I'll use it. And, uh, you know, I have friends in the hobby that I've met and uh, maybe I can help them out with their tanks too. So um, that's the update for this tank. I'll give you a quick, I'll go over and show you the new tank setup real quick. All right, here is the new Waterbox 60.2. Um, it is currently cycling. It has been cycling for, I want to say, three weeks now. Um, I really like this tank. Uh, it came with a lot of stuff, so um, if you want to see the setup videos, I'll put a card here or check in the description. Um, but I have a playlist for the setup. So I bought this tank six months old. Um, it was used. I broke it down, obviously. Started new. Uh, the person I bought it from had some pretty bad green hair algae. Uh, it came with a lot of things, so let's talk about what it came with. So it came with this Radeon XR15 G5. Really nice light. I've never used the Radeons before, and I really like it. Very minimal disco ball effect in the tank, as you can see there. 
came with this custom lid that fits right over the tank in this um, feeder so you can put like your frozen food in there and let it thaw out inside that cup so that's really cool came with the adaptive reef controller and I really like this I've been wanting to have some sort of setup for my equipment so it's not just a mess um, I think I'm going to implement this setup in my other tank came with this BRS sign I wouldn't have bought that otherwise came with the trident um, I have two energy bars on this one there and one on the side here uh, it only came with one but I used one energy bar for my other Neptune system uh, came with the um, the sump return pump I'm, I'm not too familiar I think it's not the Vortec is it the Vortec I don't know um, haven't used that before so I like that and then I used the MP10 for my other tank came with an ATL all sorts of stuff right so you, you get where I'm going with this so that's the uh, controller board I got to clean up on the side here I still got to hook up the dose um, and the trident's not going because there's nothing to test yet because there's nothing in this tank and then the sump so I love my automatic cabinet lighting so I installed that here, and uh, if you're looking for how to do that, I made a video on that as well. Um, I installed the Red Sea Reef Mat filter roller, because you guys know I like that. Came with a refugium light, it's an AI refugium light. I took some media from my other tank and threw it down in here to help start the cycle. I also used like a whole bottle of um, Dr. Tim's uh, Turbo Start, whatever it's called. Came with this skimmer here. Oops, sorry. I've got a new gimbal here for recording, so hopefully the videos are more steady, so it's still learning how to use it. But came with this skimmer, so the sum saw set up. It's uh, tank's doing good. Um, I really, I didn't think I was gonna like the color of the cabinet because my other one's white, but I really like this because it, it matches the floor. So um, really happy with this tank. So I think the cycle's nearly complete. So I've been adding ammonia to it, and the next day the ammonia is gone. So I don't have any ammonia in this tank right now. Never saw the nitrite spike, um, however the test I'm using is a couple of years old, expired, so it's possible it happened and the test just didn't uh, pick it up once I'm using an older test kit. So um, I do have nitrates in this tank, so I'm going to give it a, probably a couple more weeks just to play it safe. There's really no rush to put anything in here. Um, but yeah, this tank is nearly done and I really, so far I really like it. So. I've been cycling, cycling the tank with the light off, but I just turned it on for the purpose of this video here. So, um, but yeah, really like that controller board there and um, think I might be purchasing another one for my other tank. So, uh, I'll show you the Aptasia tanks real quick. All right, so here's the Aptasia tanks. They both look pretty nasty. The one on the left looks terrible. It's got really bad algae outbreak. Um, there are unfortunately two clowns in here because it's the only home I have for them right now. But they'll be going in the other tank or I'll be moving them into this tank after and taking these two clowns and putting them in the other tank. So I'm um, probably going to sell these guys actually. I've had them for a while. Uh, I really like the uh, the black clowns better here. They, they're like much more active and like they love to eat. Like as soon as I put my hand in the tank they come running over where the other clowns don't. So. Um, but yeah, the Aptasia is doing pretty good. Got some red cyano on there. So once I remove all the fish out of here, I will treat it. Um, but not really worried about it. Like I said, I'm just growing Aptasia in this tank. And this is a temporary home for these fish. So, um, And it, it, I think the algae outbreak and everything is worse. Because I don't normally feed these tanks every day before the fish. But now I have to because I have fish in there. So I need to make sure they eat. So... Um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment. If you have any tips or tricks that I may have missed on why my tank is not doing too good in the other room, uh, let me know because I would love to hear it. And then when I get the ICP results back, I'll share that with you guys. So have a great day. I'll catch up with you soon.